Hi guys, time for another unboxing and review and tonight I have got the new tooled Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-17. If I said the name wrong, I do apologise. I've tried to get it right and I can't, obviously. Mikoyan Gurevich uh, MiG-17, so that's the last time I'm going to say that name, okay? It's the Fresco, okay? So it's the, that's the NATO um, reported name for this kit. It also comes with the other finish, which is the Chinese licensed version of this plane, the Shenyang J5. Airfix have basically retooled a classic or a brand new tool, I should say. Um, they did have a 1 to 48 scale back in the day, which was the Smur version, and they just put new de uh, decals in in 1992. But this is absolutely brand new for Airfix to do this kit. Now, when I look back into the catalogue, this is the 2019, so this was back in uh, January, February when I got this. This was the release, okay? This is everything that they had on it. So you could easily see this was what it apparently should look like when I open up the box. There's some really, really nice um, pictures there of the mode that they have created. Now, um, so this was going to be released November 19. It's now in December, so it's a little bit later than expected. But it does look amazing by these pictures. I just can't wait to open the box and have a look. Um, there was a bit of information in this where it was just saying that um, America would become home to significant numbers of these aircraft, most coming into the hands of private collectors, but a small number used in dissimilar aircraft trials and to perfect combat techniques against smaller, more agile jet fighters. Two beautifully restored examples have also been popular displayed performers of the US air show circuit over the years. So fair play to them for bringing out a brand new model. It's a fighter aircraft from the Soviet Union, designed by uh, Mikoyan Gurevich. Its first flight was in January 1950. It was introduced in, in service in 1952. That Apparently, there is some limited service left of this plane. It was the Soviet Air Forces, the People's Liberation Army Air Force had this, the Polish Air Force and the Vietnam People's Air Force had this plane. Obviously, there was other variants. There was... Um, the Milik Lem-6 and the Shenyang J-5. It was the predecessor to the MiG-19. Okay, It was a, a high subsonic fighter aircraft produced in Russia and it operated in many variants. Um, the, the advanced development of this, of this plane was actually the Shenyang J-5. It saw its first combat in 1958 in, in, on the... Uh, a second Taiwan Strait crisis and it proved to be an effective threat against more modern supersonic fighters of the United States in the Vietnam War. The MiG-17s were designed to intercept straight and level flying enemy bombers, not for air-to-air -air combat or dogfighting as we call it. Um, this subsonic, it was subsonic because it was um, 9.93 mark it never made one mark or mac one it was um so you couldn't call it a, a, a supersonic fighter it was just a subsonic one um it was effective against the slower 0.6 to 8 mark planes but it was heavily loaded u.s fighter bombers as well as the mainstay american strategic bombers during the mig-17's development cycle so as the bombers were coming along from america the mig-17s basically were aimed for that sort of defense now a little bit of history about the engine because i find the it's fascinating the engine in this plane the engine was called the klimov vk1 and it was the first Soviet jet engine to see large production. It was developed by Vladimir um, Klimov. And he first produced this in the Gas 116 works. It was derived from the Rolls-Royce Neen. Okay. When I mean uh, derived, I'll, I'll explain it. Because the, the actual Rolls-Royce engine was only used in very, very few planes. I think it was mostly the Hawker Seahawk and the submarine attacker. And the United States um, made it under license as the Pratt & Whitney J-42 that basically powered the Truman F-9F 
Panther. So anyway, the history of how this engine became to be was in 1946, just before the Cold War really, really started to burn. The new British Labour government under the Prime Minister Clement Attlee was trying to improve diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union. So he authorised Rolls-Royce to export 40 Rolls-Royce Neen um, turbojet engines over to him, you know, to let them use. But in 1958, it was discovered that during a visit to Beijing by the deputy chairman of Rolls-Royce, that the engine had been copied without licence to power the original MiG-15. First, it was known as the RD-45, and then there were some real problems with the actual the actual engine that they redesigned it slightly and copied it even closely, the um, the Neen, and then the engine had entered production as the Klimov VK-1. Now, Rolls Royce later attempted to claim nearly two hundred million pounds in license fees, but it was unsuccessful. So this um, RD45 was improved to produce the VK1, which differed from the Neen in having a larger combustion chamber, had a slightly larger turbine, and it had a revised induction, giving greater airflow through the engine. And then also with this plane here, the 17F, the model was given an afterburner, giving it some huge extra power, which took it up to the, I think it was 0.95 Mach. One bit of history of the engine also is that these engines are still used today in Russia and they mount them on trucks and on railroad cars as snow blowers and ice melters. So there's the history of the engine and the plane that we are going to look at building. So let's just have a look, look at the box. Um, we just cut the, the tape. And it's a top opener. So off the lid slides, there you go, put it to one side. There's a bag of uh, sprues and there is the decals, which look really, really crisp. Look at that. So Chinese and Russian on the decals. I'll just put the paper that protects it to one side into the box. Now, Airfix have really made uh, leaps and bounds, I should say, in their construction kit instructions. So let's have a little look. There's some information there about it. So, so you do the cockpit first, blah, blah. There's the seat. Then do the engine. Looks like you get a pilot with it. It's a funny looking face. Look at that for a face. You see that? <laughs> So just opening up, there you go, you do the fuselage, put them all together, all the bits together. You can drill holes for the for the um, missiles or the rockets or the torpedoes, whatever they are. Then you can design it so that, you've, I suppose you've got to cut some bits out if you want the wings up. Or you can have the wings down, um, the wheels down, sorry. Wings go on, then your tail, your fin, there's your wheels. Some nice, nice, nice work there. Nice bit of graphics there to show you where all the pieces go. It is look, it looks brilliant. Little bits of where red, where you know what are the pieces that you're gluing in, or sticking in. Uh, note when building this model with the brake doors closed, follow steps 27 and 28, and miss out steps 29 to 30. When building this model with brake doors open, miss out steps 27, 28. Carry on from steps 29. So you got two options here where you want to go with it up to you and there's the finished job there so you've got the um the two types the, the two finishes there and on the back here you've got the the russian version so you, inside so basically where you've got the really what i call difficult spray job or paint job of trying to get that sort of pattern in the in the in the finish is the Shenyang J5 version, and then if you just want the bog standard one using gunmetal, matte black, and 11 silver, that's what you need to do with that. So, the bag obviously it's uh sealed, so which I don't cut my fingers, I'm, cut my fingers for a pastime. Let's have a look what you get in the kit. So, 
well done air fix they've gone and put the the glass in its own separate bag i really like that it's just it's just professionalism isn't it when you so it doesn't get scratched see so there's your cockpit and your glass there very very nice get it close no scratches on it can't really see a seam mark so there you go there's your your, your your clears just have a look at the actual kit itself so it comes as uh three sprues and there's some lovely detail here so i'm just going to bring it up so there you go you can just see some really clear detail on the actual parts look at this this whoops just caught the camera there sorry let's just try and get it back into focus there you go look at that there's some lovely detail on these sprues fan bloody tastic really really good let me get the camera to focus look at the wheels there brilliant absolutely fantastic so sprue one let's just uh push this up here so it's out of the way slightly keep it there right so let's look at the fuselage some lovely detail on the fuselage there if we try and get it close this is a really really nice looking kit and because it's new there's hardly any flash whatsoever isn't that nice it looks terrific just looking at the uh at the fuselage again there's some lovely details some rivets there all recessed bits look at the other side very 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 sweet very very crisp let's just look at the so look at the pilot there's the pilot there try and get it to focus focus there you go look at that lovely lovely detail nice on the wings as well so you can see what you're getting this is going to be a really good kit to build. There you are. Look on the other side. Details there. It, it, it just looks really, really crisp. Well done, FX. A lovely looking kit. I think it's going to be a beaut to put together as well. It's not going to need a lot of work. There's not, not much prep. There's a little bit of flash. On some of there's a little tiny bit there, but that's nothing, is it? Fantastic. So three sprues plus your glass. And the box. So just quickly go around the box so that we know. If you're looking for it, the number is A O three O nine one. Mick Mick. Mikhail Jan Gurevich MiG 17F Fresco, or you can do the Shenyang J5 version. So, you the paints you need to do it properly. So, you need, um, so if you're doing A, which is the Shenyang version, okay, you will need Humbro 11, 33, 53, 56, 85, and 125, 60, 164, and 168, and if you and 105 and 116. So you don't need the 105, 116 if you're doing the B, and the pilot is 26, 34, and 61. It's a skill level two, and it tells you everything you need in the box. So there you have it. There is the plane. A brand new tool. Airfix have never done one of these before. All they've ever done, as I said, is the 148 version, which was the Smur version with new with different decals on it. So yeah, a really good effort there from Airfix, and I'm looking forward to building it. If you like the video, could you please click like? If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Any comments on this, please leave them below. I will try to respond to every comment that's posted. And if you've done all of that and you want to help the channel a little bit more, please share the video. 
Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.